Well, you didn't have to change the truth. You just had to pick what parts of the story you were going to tell, right? So there's a whole beginning of the book where you get to see him as a young boy and see all of that. And then there's the, the, the actual story of what they went through. And then there's sort of later in life. And what was really interesting to us was the period of time that they were at the University of Washington and uh, taking on uh, sort of three different groups, taking on the seniors first and then taking on the rich, you know, kind of uh, fraternity kind of kids and then taking on the Nazis. So we felt like that was a really exciting time to do. So we had to focus, uh, got to understand what the ins and outs of the actual rowing entail, got to understand what speed is like by uh, getting in closer. Uh, as opposed to being far back. When you're far back, nothing looks fast. So you could use that as a, a as your palette in a way to, you know, that showed us some of the ways you have to care about the people who are rowing. But, you know, rowing in the, at, at the turn of the last century, particularly in the 1920s, was the number one watched sport, meaning uh, attended sport in the United States. So it was, there were 100,000 people at these things. Um, so it was a very big, so it has been uh, a very big sport and it still is a big sport, but you know, it's kind of, it's not, it hasn't been, it's not as big as football and baseball and basketball and all that now. So it, it's just about trying to show the excitement and remind people of what something was and how exciting that was. There's this element that what makes it so special is that they did it out of necessity. Um, they're rowing because they wanted to stay in college. And that was the only way they could stay in college was during the depression. And they were very poor. And these guys were lumberjacks and worked in, uh, you know, uh, on the river and they were strong, tough kids, but they were poor. And it gave them an edge because, you know, if they lost or if they didn't make the team or if they didn't make the cut, they probably weren't going to get an education. They weren't going to get ahead. They weren't going to, uh, make a life for themselves and their families. So the, the the stakes were much higher for them. And so it it drives their story and it, I think it drives our narrative too. It, it was really important for us to get rowing right because that's something that you haven't really seen in movies. Uh, it's funny, but it hasn't been seen where you can see them all in exact, you know, in the perfect form, the, with the swing, as they call it. Uh, and it's hard to get actors to do that, right? You, you have to really train for it. We, so the first thing we did when we cast the actors was we said, you know, if you're not athletic, then we're going to have to let you go. And we don't want to do that. So, you know, let's have an honest discussion of whether or not you guys can do that. It was hard. It's a hard gig. Because, you know, when we go out to shoot, you know, when these guys row in a race, you know, they row for, you know, 10 minutes. Um, and when they train, they train for a couple of hours out on the water. You know, we're shooting for 11 hours a day and they've got to be out there rowing. So it's, you know, it's a really physically uh, demanding part for all these guys. They all lost a ton of weight and they all look great. You know, we had, we had uh, coaches that were training them. They were doing uh, two sessions a day, a morning sessions and afternoon sessions. They were doing weight training and cardio. And I mean, it was as if they were training to be rowers on a, on a, on a college team. And uh, to their credit, about- And to their trainer's and to, credit. To the trainer's credit, of course. About four weeks later, you know, we went back out there and they were rowing, you know, they were rowing as a team. And, and then as we started shooting, they, they kept practicing. Yeah, we had, to, like, they would finish shooting and they would have to go practice. Because, you know, there's a lot of the movie that isn't on the water. So we'd shoot and go, get out, go, go rowing. But it worked for us because by the time we got to that final race, which we should, sort of shot in order. So by the time we got to the, the race in Germany, our kids were could keep up with, they couldn't beat any of the, you know, the professionals who were rowing alongside them. Uh, but they could stay in the game with them. Because what you don't want to do is, you know, shoot a close-up of their face and then cut to, a, cut to the wide shot and it's doubles. And, yeah. you know, we, you want to see that, that it's the boys. Mm -hmm. The thing that was amazing about those guys, like the real guys, was that they, at the end of the race, got to 40, 42. That was just unheard of, you know, to go that fast at that, at that point in the race. Uh, our kids could get sort of consistently and really at a good pace at 34, 
36, where you go, oh, they look like they're racing. You know, Grant and I, we, all of us have done a military movie or two where it's like, okay, you're gonna go train and spend time and learn. It always helps in some way, whatever way. And, you know, the idea is you wanna to get to a place where if you're in a scene together that you don't have to look at the other one to know what they're doing and there's that. So there was, they were very confident of each other and uh, comfortable with one another. And those matter, that makes a big difference. Well, I mean, you, you, you sort of hit it on the head. I mean, he, he comes to, he comes to rowing only out of need. Like, he, you know, he just wants a place to work and a place to sleep so he can go to school, go to college and, you know, make something of himself. And so rowing was just a means to an end for him. So once he started to row and once he got involved with this coach and these boys and, uh, and Pocock and the building of the boats, you know, he, he was infected by it. And that kind of informs how, how he, how he is in the rest of the film. He becomes, he becomes, you know, one of the great rowers of all time. I think also what happens is that these guys, because they grew up in the depression and because he was left, his father left when he was 14 years old. I think they all, and all of them, they were poor. They learned to fend for themselves at a very young age. And uh, suddenly they're in a, they're part of a team that fending for yourself doesn't work. You actually have to rely on the guy in front and the guy behind you. And, uh, and that makes a big difference for them. And so one of the stories, one of the main stories of this film is about being able to be part of a team, not that th this only works if we're, we all do it together. It doesn't work on your own. And I think that that was the lesson he had to learn. I think a lot of those guys had to learn because I think that was a, they, th they were young and poor and hungry. And, uh, and the coach, Ulbrichsen, had to teach them how to channel that into working together, not uh, by themselves. And that's what Ulbrichsen did beautifully. No, you know, Callum's athletic and he's a really wonderful actor and he's kind of always been for the last few years been kind of around the edges of um, of stardom in a way, around the edges of having something really pop for him. And it felt like this is one, this felt right for him. We were really excited to, for him to do it. And it just from the minute he came in, we felt like we had the right guy. He's the jockey on the horse, you know. He uh, he tells you how fast to go. He steers the boat. He's the one who's, uh, you know, he's the captain of the ship. Yeah. You know, that's he's, his job. He's like the coach on the boat. Yeah, you know? yeah. He gave a great audition. Yeah, he gave a great audition, and we really thought he could do a great job. And he's a terrific kid. He got engaged while he was there in England. Deceptively hard part. We oh yeah. We thought it would be easy to cast that part and um though there are a lot of terrific actors that came in to read for it there's just there's a i don't know quality. what the quality is and 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 it took a while actually it was the last thing that we cast yeah. and finally we we're like oh yeah that he's the right guy for it mm -hmm. well he's a man with his back up against the wall you know he hasn't won at this point he's won as a actual rower as an individual rower but he hasn't won uh, as a coach and he is up against the you know uh, very rich schools and they're not a rich school and so they're they're working with supplies that are subpar uh they don't have the kind of recruiting they don't have any of those kind of things and his job's on the line it's a depression you know and all those co coach bowls all those coaches we do a scene about it they go i need this job i mean you know, there's, this was a time of, that was, you know, we were 30% unemployment. This was a time where eating was a, a worry. So they needed this job. And if they don't win, they're going to lose the job. So he, his back is against the wall for many reasons. There's pride involved, obviously. He, he ended up being the coach there for a long, long time and had great successes. So he is a legendary coach. And that's why having uh, such a wonderful actor and Joel there made it big difference you know Joel comes to the party with a lot of gravitas already and a lot of class and uh and so he didn't have to do much to to make us as an audience trust him and want to fight for him you know 